cheddar, mozzarella, parmesan, feta, cream cheese. These are just a few of the hundreds of types of cheeses that exist and today I tried your cheese recipes to find my favorite. We are going to be rating them on the basis of how fun and easy they are to make and how good they taste. So yeah, let's get you started with the first one. Cheesy Apple Salsa Chips by Zainab My favorite part about this series is that we get to try things which are actually like newly created by people. I mean, some of these recipes they haven't been existing for forever, you know. Like they're made with imagination and I like that. For the apple salsa, chop an apple into cubes as well as onion and a few green chilies. Add that to a big mixing bowl and I almost forgot the tomato which is kind of an important ingredient for a salsa so I just quickly chopped that and that also goes in the same bowl. There's lemon juice, salt and chaat masala and mix and that's the salsa ready. For the sauce, it's basically just a mix of ketchup and mayo and also green chutney which we will add later. I actually also really like green uncle chips so that's what I used and I spread it all over a baking mat. Top with the mayo ketchup sauce, green chutney cuz I don't think it's optional if a recipe calls for green chutney we have to add it that's the protocol. And then the apple salsa. Finish with a decent grating of mozzarella cheese and this gets baked for 10 to 15 minutes till the cheese melts. Okay, first of all, this smelled amazing. I had my doubts about combining apple with mayo and ketchup, but it works because apple is kind of just an add-on. It's mostly savory, so apple is just like a touch of sweetness and crunchiness to the whole thing. And chutney works really well with uncle chips and cheese and salsa. Even though I do think the chips they get a bit soggy because of the sauces and salsa, it still tastes very very nice and It is decently spicy too which I did not think would be but I liked it. This gets an easy 10 for creativity. A 9 for ease cuz you just need to make the salsa and then it's just a sheet pan bake and 9 for taste. I would definitely recommend you try this one out. Chenar dalna by Devjani. This is a Bengali sabzi. We take some fresh chana which is cottage cheese and mix with some flour till it's tight enough to roll into balls. I heated up a good amount of mustard oil and fried the balls in it till they were golden brown. They crisp on the outside but obviously soft on the inside cuz it's chana. I took out most of the mustard oil cuz there was a lot in there but I still left a pretty decent amount of oil and we'll make our sabzi in it. Temper cumin seeds, bay leaves, cinnamon and cardamom till it starts smelling really good. In goes diced potatoes along with green chilies that will fry in this oil till cooked on the outside. They need to be golden and crisp like this. Now we'll grate a tomato and some ginger and add that to the potatoes and fry. Any raw smell should be gone and the bright red tomato should darken. For seasoning, there's cumin powder, turmeric, chili powder, salt and sugar. Mix and it's time to add in the water which will be absorbed by the potatoes and cook them and it'll just thicken to make a really nice gravy. I'm sorry I just don't have too much energy because I have had a cold, like a sore throat for a week now and Yeah that was kind of the reason I wasn't being able to post this video and shots were you know doing the job cuz you can kind of disguise your voice and you can sound more energetic there but for a longer period of time it's not that easy Okay so finally the chana balls go in and cook with the gravy for a couple of minutes to absorb all that flavor and as you can see all the oil comes to the top turn off the heat and finish with garam masala and ghee and this chana dalna is ready to be served with the roti and bonus points to me for having bengali fried rice on the side which i made for a different video but it's there this was so hearty and warm and i can definitely see this being somebody's comfort food i actually also made my bengali mashi try it and she also really liked it so Yeah, I think we did a great job with this one. I'll give this a 7 for creativity. Again a 7 for ease cuz this does take a decent amount of time, but I just think it's like a labor of love cuz the taste, I'll give a 9.5. It is a delicious sabzi that's technically one pot. So, yeah, it's it's very nice. one pot spicy mac and cheese by tarunima i know a lot of you like seeing the times when i fail during cooking so here it is i recently got an induction because i want to film in the same place you know everything in one place which is my window so trust me you don't need a crazy amount of space to film and yeah using an induction is a new thing for me so i burned the butter and oil and chili and it was not a good experience but we learned i ditched it and then again on low heat this time heated up olive oil and butter and directly broke a red chili into it saute for a bit 
and then in goes crushed garlic mix and let the garlic get fragrant and then in goes all purpose flour which we'll cook with the butter to remove its rawness add a lot of milk and uncooked macaroni and salt and mix and cook the macaroni in the milk you have to stir this frequently and keep on adding milk and even without cheese at this point it is so creamy because of the starches and milk that are in there finally the cheese and i'm doing a mix of cheddar and mozzarella and mix that all till the cheese melts this is so creamy and decadent finishing with fresh coriander since i didn't have parsley and chili flakes and i know i've said this like seven times already but look at how thick and creamy that is i am a huge fan of mac and cheese and this one which is so rich mouth melting and definitely something i look forward to eating more it's not too spicy just a hint of spice which pairs so well with the ultra milky sauce this is an 8.5 for creativity 9.5 for ease cuz it is one pot and barely takes 20 minutes to come together and 9.5 for taste cheesy corn by rushita melt some butter in a pan and add roughly chopped garlic to it let the garlic cook for a bit and then we add boiled corn and mix it with butter and garlic i shredded some cheddar cheese and added quite a lot of it to the pan and mixed with everything the cheese melts and this smells very nice add the mix to a baking tray lined with a parchment paper or a silicon mat like i did and spread the mix as evenly as you can i topped this with jalapenos and panko bread crumbs and baked till it was all together this is a classic example of a recipe which i did not think would be as good as it turned out to be the cheese is cheesing in this one it's crunchy but gooey in some parts and paired with the sweet corn garlic and tangy jalapenos it's just it's an addictive snack so given how much cheese and butter is in there please don't make this if you don't have good self control cuz me and my mom we ate the entire thing in one sitting okay this is a 9.5 for creativity because i have seen cheesy corn recipes before but crispy corn on a baking tray i like that nine for ease cuz it is so easy and taking into account this is a cheese episode baked cheddar cheese is obviously a 10 for taste paneer paratha taco by avi just like the name suggests this one is a paratha stuffed with paneer and then it's folded and used as a taco shell we start by crumbling some paneer into a bowl and then season there's pressed garlic coriander oregano chili flakes turmeric chili powder salt and lemon juice mix this well and that's the paneer stuffing ready to be filled into the dough and rolled into a paratha i dusted my dough as well as the base with a very generous sprinkle of whole wheat flour and then just rolled out the dough a bit Place the stuffing in the center and then wrap the filling inside the dough by pressing the corners into the center. Now we'll roll this into a paratha and toast in ghee till crispy. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, I love lachha paratha and I've made it multiple times on here, but I have actually never made a regular stuffed paratha not once in my life till this very moment. So yeah, that felt like a never-ending sentence. It was fun and if I must say so myself, we did end up with a very good-looking paratha, so I was kind of proud of myself. To turn this paratha into a taco, first we'll add the fillings and there's green chutney, onion, sweet corn and a slice of cheese. Fold the paratha and that's our taco ready. I mean, this is just a regular paneer paratha amped up, so it it just obviously tasted so good. I'll give this an 8 for creativity, 8.5 for ease cuz if you have the dough ready, it just it barely takes any time and 9 for taste. Kurkure cheese sticks with a feta cheese dip by Tishna. That sounds super cheesy, so I was just very excited for this one. So I made the feta dip first. Add some cream cheese to a bowl and crumble feta cheese into it and season. There's oregano, salt and pepper, lemon juice, garlic on fee, which has both the roasted garlic and olive oil, and just mash it all together into a dip that's tangy, rich but fresh. For the kurkure cheese sticks, we first make a slurry with simply corn starch and water, and then crush a whole packet of kurkure. This part is always so fun. Cut cheese cubes into strips, and now let's coat them with both the slurry and the kurkure. Double dipping is definitely the way to go for this one, since the first time the kurkure masala sticks to the corn starch, and then after the second dip, the kurkure pieces also stick. So when we fry, it's just all crispy. Okay, so I really wasn't expecting that good of a cheese pull. Like this was so satisfying that I did like three cheese pulls on camera. It was just, it was honestly amazing. If I was just craving fried food, I would really love this, and I do think it's very creative. 
I'll give this a solid 9.5 for creativity, 8 for ease because the coating I'm trying to me is personally a bit of a task but and 8.5 for taste. Final verdict. Okay, so based on creativity, you should definitely try the apple salsa chips on a time crunch and just overall ease. I would say the one pot mac and cheese is a great decadent meal option and solely based on taste. The cheesy corn is delicious and I am solely basing it on how quickly I ate the entire thing. Taking all three factors into consideration, cheesy corn for the win and that's it for me rating your cheese recipes. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did and yeah, stay tuned to my community posts to get updated about the upcoming parts if you're interested in me trying your recipes. I'll see you soon on my next one. Bye! She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. She's a Mona Lisa.